That was our mindset. Every night was a game. Yeah. And we wanted to win by 30 or 40 points. Like that was our mindset. Go in. Just go in. And I would tell them, the record's gonna skip, keep rhyming. Because sometimes I'm gonna make the record skip on purpose. You need the Kellervision app. 24-7 mini documentaries, podcasts, live shows, DJ live streams, top fives, subscription packages, plus products for all your podcasts and street culture sports. Download it from the App Store for free today. Beatbox created. And we need to talk about world music and street culture. Podcast. Well, ladies and gentlemen, this is the Killer Keller Podcast. Big shout to all inside, all the subscribers, hit the bell, you know what to do. Um, big shout out to graffitikings.co.uk. I am, I'm very excited. Literally, just before we even went live here, we were just talking about how criminally unfair it's been for ages not to have ever really crossed paths properly. Um, and we are doing it via Zoom. The mighty, beasties finest, world champion, scratch pickles, mix master Mike inside the house. How are we, brother? I'm good. I'm real, real good. Wow. Real, real so, good. So good to see you, man. So good. Yeah, to appreciate see you. it. Appreciate Where it. Where are you in the world? Where are you in the world? Um, well, right now, you know, uh, we're in uh, we're in an indisclosed location right now. Oh, like in a and- bunker. Uh, sort of, yeah. I'm at one of my properties, and um, I'm 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 recording a, a I'm scoring a film, and I'm uh, making another album. Oh shit! So you're doing yeah. it. Yeah, really... <gasps> I'm really so this doing is, it. Yeah, this is this is really happening in the right at the right time as well. Oh, I gotta tell you, like it's this is all perfect timing. You know, I mean, as fucked up, as super fucked up as the world is, I mean, you gotta, uh, you know. If they're gonna lock me down, then I'm gonna I'm gonna come I'm I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna be better than I was yesterday, and I'm gonna come out of this with something to show for. That's absolutely the way <laughs> the way to go. It's super important because you could go one way. You could be like, oh, well, it's me. What are we gonna do? What the hell's gonna happen? What's what's the end of the world gonna look like? But you know, that's not the way it should be, should it? It should be really embraced as best possible. <laughs> no, you know, and I'm you know I'm fortunate to be a creative. You know, as as, as a creative. You're you're allowed to to vent your feelings, yeah. so that's what I've been able to do during these three decades is ba- basically venting my feelings and what what's going on mm, inside me sure. and and what and, and what my DNA represents. What, what actually, yeah, good point. What does your DNA represent? Because I was in the creative process today, hadn't been in there for ages, and you know what it's like to get the engine started sometimes on a creative, uh, clear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, does, yeah, yeah. How does Mixmaster Mike a- execute at a clean sheet? Well, I always like to look at myself as a science experiment. Um, the equations, you know, from my equations are the notes. The right. riffs are the the riffs are the molecules, and nice. you know, and, and the composition is the atomic structure, and that's that's what I represent. Do, do I you feel? The, yeah. Yeah, do you feel like, um, because when I think of Mixed Master Mike, uh, in all de- de- throughout the decades, I just feel like it's a constant flow of energy. Like you're, you're just at complete peace with the way it will turn out. I don't feel like you're ever held back by any prohibiting you know anxieties or questions about what you you it feels like you just like splurt straight on the on the decks and you're away you know what i mean yeah i guess i guess you know uh i built up uh over the years i built up a tremendous amount of confidence in my abilities to execute and um i'm i'm, I'm fully convinced that uh that that i can come from many different angles and approach something with uh without compromising and with full integrity and that's what it's about you know not compromising and, and just being you i mean for me i mean i had to create my own high my own highway gather up mm. my own data gather up my own data come up with my own conclusions and keep building and adding on to what i created mm, that's right 
That's yeah. right, because you really did create your, and still do create your own lane. And this is one. Of, this is the reason why I'm I'm going to find this particular podcast the most interesting because it it you really did forge a, uh, a your own way of working the turntables before anybody else did. Are we I mean I know there will be inspirations and other you you I'm sure you'll contradict that, but but it just felt like you and a handful of, you know, maybe three or four were coming into this arena with such a fresh perspective. It, it just, it blew the doors open on what was possible. Um, let's start from the beginning, man. When did you first start? When did you first pick up the turntables? Well, before, before I even picked up the turntables, I was fascinated with soundtrack music. You know, my heroes right. growing up, my heroes growing up at an early, at my, my early teens was, you know, Ennio, Ennio Marconi, Lalo Schifrin, um, Carl Sagan, Dick Hyman, Morton Sabotnik. So this was right. even before I was a DJ. So, so, th- so then, then I discovered DJing and scratching and then, and then I applied that, that, that philosophy of, of that composer mentality. So basically, right. you know what, I'm not really a DJ. I'm actually, I fooled people into thinking I was this DJ, but really, really genuinely, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a composer and at heart. Mm-hmm. And that's what I do. But I'm, I'm just a composer that happens to DJ pretty good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Do you think, do you think, um, with that in mind, do you think the bar and, 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 and you know, God, I'm not putting words in your mouth. This is me saying it, all right? But yeah. when you're so classically minded and the bar on something like hip hop, um, by with, with all of its like credit, is reasonably low c- compared to the symphonic, you know, patterns and structures and, you know, musical arrangements of something classical. To go in with an alternative instrument at, into a scene that is relatively low low rent getting involved and actually playing hardball and going superior because of your background or do you think that helped do you think that helps oh definitely definitely it's, it's my you know my upbringing and and what i surrounded myself with yeah. during the moments and and these became my inspirational outlets of kind of kind of um i use that energy as uh as something i could turn into compositions and then mm-hmm. if, you, if you hear my records they're you know they're fully unpredictable mm-hmm. and um but but it's it's uh they're all different emotions they're all different feelings and, and you know you 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 go with, go with your spidey sense right and spidey i've been going with, I, i've been going with my spidey sense for three decades now i love that you said spidey sense um yeah yeah man the uh a, a comparable i guess a good comparable would be uh, you know, like a like a Tony Iommi from Black Sabbath. He he had like clearly had like crazy versatility with his instrument, yeah. but then lost parts of his finger, and then he had to reach, and that kind of created that rock low slung heaviness. And I would say that was a similar sort of situation for yourself because had you have not worked with the limitations of hip hop and worked with the turntable, you put, I don't know, you, you just, you created that channel, you created that road, you know? Yeah. And, and that's, uh, you know, and, and that's something I was thinking, you know, at the time I wasn't thinking like, Hey, I'm going to pave my own way. I just thought, you know, mm. this is me. This is how my D de- this is how, this is, this is, this is how I'm wired. And this is yeah. how things come out because, because I'm naturally wired this way. It's organic. So it's an organic process that I don't even got to think about and go, I'm going to do this. I'm going to make a song like this and I'm going to pave the way for this. No, it's just something because of my passion, you know, mm. I'm a, I'm addicted to making music, you know, like when I get off the, when I get off the line with you, I'm going to, I'm going to start chopping up some edits right now. But, but, you know, that's just who I am. You know, mm. you, you, when, when people, people ask me, you know, how, what, about longevity and, and, and how I'm able to sustain what I'm doing for, uh, 30 years and more, yeah. but it's, it's, it's because it's, it's a passion I have. I, I don't go halfway, halfway enjoying it. You got to go yeah. hundred and hundred and ten percent enjoying yeah. it. Yeah. Doing it because, because not that you have to, it's because you want to. 
Mm. And um, yeah, and and that and that's the uh, yeah yeah that's the uh, that's my whole uh, way of doing things and the way I've created this whole path, I guess. You know that that's quite that's quite intuitive from an artistic point of view, like us as individuals talking yeah, like it, this. Yeah, intu- intuition is the biggest thing out of this whole. Intuition is the key word. Yeah. Intuition is the key to navigation, and this and, and, mm-hmm. and being in the music industry. And being wise to everything that's going on in the world, musically, everything, physically, metaphysically, whatever, it's mm. you got you got to have you got to be intuitive. Yeah. You know what I mean? You got to yeah. know when you're doing too much and when to you know re- when to release the throttle and when to throttle up. So yeah, yeah for sure, for sure. How's yeah. it working with other people? Like we will get into some of the award-winning moments and some of the most. Oh uh, yeah, uh, just me <laughs> being in the crowd, just like salivating and my head rotating around spitting out pea soup about some of your DJ sets but <laughs> but you know how in in a life of mix master mike and the the way that you collaborate i mean we're talking about creative output now what's it like working as mix master mike alongside someone like cuba or someone like shortcut you know cuz that tension release, like you were saying, an in- intuitive approach to tackling the decks. Once you're with two other massive components, two you know icons of their own, how do you how do you cooperate? How did you manage to cooperate? Like for instance, Clams of Death. How did you even? How did you know when to pull back? When to get involved? How, how did that even come about? Well, well, for me, for for me, like like I said, like I come from, you know. The compositional background as a composer, but 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 I'm a galvanizer. I'm a galvanizer, right? And I like to, I like to galvanize the troops. <laughs> that's 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 my duty is to galvanize. I can see everyone. that. I can see that now in the in the in the you know the trio. I can see that. I'm gonna yeah. bring something to the, I'm gonna bring something to the table, and I'm gonna go. Okay, let's build upon this. Mm-hmm. Let, 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 let let's lay let's lay some. Let's lay some concrete work over this frame right here, you know. Mm-hmm. So, so it's like you know, it's 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 uh, building up that that excitement and that joy of trying to tackle a composition or something that uh, has never been created before. Yeah, that's that must be. I mean, only speaking from a beatbox point of view. I mean, I guess when you're doing, it, you don't actually realize at the time what significant difference it's going to make to the world or what, anything <laughs> that you. But but that must feel like one hell of a level of. It's almost like serious play. It's like you're playing, but at the same time, you've got a structure there, and we've got. Oh, it's a, it a draw. Yeah. Oh, it's definitely it's it's, it's elite. It's a, it's a it's it's some elite uh, marksman sniper type Ooh. shit. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's, it's it's very very methodical. I'm very very methodical. Um, yeah. When people when I when I think that people aren't paying attention, I'm going to tap into something that's going to give me their attention. Oh yeah, because people are so ADHD. You got to you got to hit them with something that's going to go. Oh wait, wait a minute. Kind of yeah. you know, a little little tap on the head and go. Hey, yeah. hey, wake up, wake up from where you're at. This do, you is, think, do you think that's some of the some reason why some of the performance pieces and the way that you tackled the decks, you know, that there, there, there's a real expression of like, you know, just exuberance and, you know, it's like flying. <laughs> and, you know, it's like, it's like you could have had a pair of nunchuckers, you know, I mean? this was just like, is, is that where that comes from? It's that attention keeping. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I mean, to do something uh, extraordinary, like, Mm. something to say, like I said, like something that's never been, uh, accomplished before and something that's, uh, um, I'm, I don't, I don't know. It's, it's, it's just like, you know, c- creating something that people would be in- inspired to follow mm. and, and just coming up with the blueprint for people. Yeah. And that's how I see my compositions are blueprints. Blueprint. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Um, I, I had Cubert on the podcast. Spoke extremely highly of those scratch pickle days. I I gushed more than I wanted to <laughs> about yeah, the time yeah. that you guys played uh, Fresh Night Seven. Mm. One of the first times I actually saw this. this, this yeah, man. I'm Damn, sure you man, have a, was... a memory of it loosely, right? 
Yeah, you know I do. Somebody posted a picture on Instagram of mm. of, of of that show, and it was so it was so b boy. It was so b boy. So it was so b boy. It was like the raw core of just what it represented was yeah. all in that in that in that house that night. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It was like the Lord of the Flies. The, <laughs> the, the embodiment, the embodiment of hip hop was in that in that yeah. building that time. It was like it was kind of for me, um, in retrospect, because I, I, I have to confess that was actually probably my first ever hip hop. That was my first ever hip hop um festival, if you want. I mean, I was I was green, I was 19, you know, I'd been to like a couple of like OC, big girls, and you know, the uh, scratch perverts. Right, 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 right. You know what I mean? It was that era, right? Yeah. But yeah. when when I got there, it was literally like the who's who of b-boy uk and europe and i don't know man i i just felt like everything had its kind of uh throwback there was almost like a throwback sensibility to it until you guys came on and then it was like the the the, the spaceship had landed and it was just like nothing I'd ever, ever seen. And I, I know that there was other people, because that crowd in there was all of a sudden it like quadrupled. It was always like everyone knew what day you guys were on. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. It was crazy. <laughs> yeah, those crazy. were good times. Those yeah, were man. good times. Yeah, yeah. We were, uh, we, that, those were times when we were, uh, the orchestra was in motion. In full mo- Yeah. Would you say that was kind of like a peak? Was That was like the wave was high at that point? Wow, um, that's a good question. Um, I, I don't know. I, I I don't know. We were just. Uh, I think I think that was our that was our transition from becoming rock steady DJs to to the Invisible Scratch Pickles. Yeah, that I, was the, that yeah. was that transition. So yeah, I would say yeah, that is the peak of the ISP. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The the the, the eye of the storm is yeah yeah. Um, your time in the sun had begun, but I remember obviously your your stint through DMC. I remember you and um, you and Q doing the set together. It was almost like you you were inaugurated as like you had to retire. There was no other choice because you were taking up <laughs> all, all, all the space. It was crazy. <laughs> Who does that? Who does that to other DJs? God damn it! <laughs> uh, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we're just we're just uh, we're just trying to expand the art form. That's it. Yeah, yeah, expanding, yeah. expanding the horizons. That's it. Yeah, for sure, for sure. And then came all the like the battle tools, which inspired a whole and all the mixtapes and all the crazy. Did it ever get? Did it ever get like? I mean, obviously there was an element of well, we've got the ball, let's fucking run with it. But was there ever a moment where it's like, oh, this is getting silly? Hold on, we can't just do that on a record. Oh no, we just did. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, yeah, you know, it, it was uh, more of uh, again going back to being a composer. It's like, okay, let's compose something that was just strictly fully on the turntables, scratching yeah. hi hats, scratching horns. Yeah. Scratching all these instruments, bongos, congas, whatever. Yeah. So, so that that was. Uh, I mean, that's been our frame of mind since we since we hooked up. Me and Cuba was to create the first ever hip hop orchestra between DJs, and that's me, uh, Apollo, and Cubert, and and um, we yeah. just started expanding on that. And now you see today when you see kids scratch. When I see kids scratching like a saxophone or a clarinet or a drum, I'm like. Ah, yeah, we do. You know, we we've done our job. We've done our yeah, job. Yeah, for sure, for sure. You did. Now you got all these other maniacs out there that are just doing it, and it's amazing. It's yeah, an amazing sure. feeling. It's an amazing for feeling sure. because I because I remember sitting in a room going, "What else can we scratch?" You know, mm-hmm. what else yeah. can we scratch? Oh no, we got violins. We got all this shit. But I remember th- those days, like really thinking about it and going, "Okay," and now. Fast forward to 2020, you got all these other DJs now. It's like really took. To, I mean, t- they they took the uh, took the torch and ran with it. Yeah, for Everyone's sure. Taking, yeah, it's awesome. It's a great thing. It's a beautiful thing. See, that's the creative mind of you. That's 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 a beautiful. Um, I always coin it with uh, beatboxing. Uh, you know, you're part of an organism, and you have to pass the baton on because there are other. Ex- 
places to explore, but you can't be the, it's, it's bigger than one person. It's bigger than just a, one piece of technology. It has to keep on moving, doesn't it? Oh, oh exactly. That's why, we, you know, that was the inspiration behind coming up with all the dirt style records. Yeah. Eardrum, me- ear, ear, eardrum medicine, um, hundred mile per hour, backsliding, turkey cuts, bionic booger breaks, all of that shit. Oh my God. We want, we wanted to share our tools with every, you know, we figured, you know what? Let's share our tools. Let's, let's give let's give other DJs our weapons, mm. and see them come up with their own interpretation of what we do with our swords. Yeah, so we're just sure. passing, we're just we're just passing out swords and grenades to the you know to the DJ community to come nice. up with their own concoctions. You're like yeah, so and that's that and that's the that's the uh, thought process the thought process of expansion, right? Mm, yeah, expanding sure. the expanding the culture when you see somebody that's ama- that's good and that could be amazing you you want to make that person amazing instead yeah. of just good because there's millions of good djs but we want to make them amazing yeah because More because then that because then that strengthens the core of the culture the yeah, dj for culture. sure and then it's able to move forward and advance and yeah do you ever do you ever look back in in your archive ne- never mind never mind other people and you saying to the yourself god like that's an idea what if they did da, 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 da. you you've got so much content over the years and i'm pretty sure only even not even half of have landed on in our ears like do you ever have those moments where you listen back and hear something that you did like 20 years ago or something and then say to yourself damn i need to switch that now i know what i can do with that and now i gotta switch it out like that <laughs> oh of course i mean my earlier <laughs> albums i'm thinking to myself holy shit i'm going you know I'm creating without a compressor. There's no compressor gauge. Yeah, for real. So shit is just fucking pouring out of me. That's just like, God damn. And I'm looking at this. I'm looking, listening to this one song. I'm like, God damn, there's five songs in this one song. Yeah. Yeah. But, 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 you know, this was the learning process as you go on. It's like a learning process. For sure. For sure. What was your, um, we talked about some of the classical artists that you grew up with, but who were your, what were your go-to musics where you're like, oh my God, that just changed my life, like in your teens, like what was the trigger for you and hip hop? What, what were the influences? Okay. Well, I mean, I grew up, of course it was, uh, you know, I was, uh, I was really inspired by John Bonham and, uh, John Paul jo- and, and John Paul Jones, um, jo- John Paul Jones and John Bonham j- just fucking destroyed me. Like, yeah. When I first, when I saw the the Zeppelin live tour video and them yeah. two when 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 it would just focus on just them two, it really just dis- really destroyed me. And yeah. the way John Paul Jones was just jo- John Paul Jones was just you know, you talk about confidence. He's yeah. like, I'm gonna do some shit, and and you're gonna remember it. And yeah. and I'm talking about it right now, you know. It's just yeah. stuck in my mind along, you know, you know, with Led, you know, of course, the Led Zeppelins, of course. And then there was like the Muddy Waters, yeah. Robert Johnson, yeah. the Meters, the Meters. Damn. The, the yeah. Meters. Yeah. Thelonious Monk. I mean, uh, James, James Brown's drummer, Clyde Stubblefield, of oh, course, had an effect time. on me. Um, uh-huh. Stevie, Stevie Ray Vaughan. I mean, um, the, 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 the Motown Sound and the Funk Brothers. I had all of this, all of this inspiration. You know what I mean? It's like all of wow. these outlets, all of these outlets rolled in. And, and so, so I took all of those inspirations and kind of, I ran with all that, all that philosophy behind that. Uh, those, those classic timeless music uh, compositions. It's like, you know, and, um, and, and, and these songs that they've created are, are timeless, right? Like, yeah, for sure. All, all the Motown stuff and everything. And I, and I study that and I go, what makes this music timeless? Yeah. And that's, that's my mindset when I go and I start banging on a drum and I come up with loops and whatever. I go, I want to make this timeless. Yeah. That's my intention. That's my intention. I don't want to just create this just for this pe- the scratch heads. Because if you're, creating, if you're creating music just for the scratch heads, which I've done, my my past four albums, mm-hmm. and then but but then then you then you zero zero yourself out to the rest of the world. Yeah, you, you want to create something that's going that the rest of the world, along with the culture, will embrace. Mm. So 
So, I mean, again, Hendrix, Thelonious Monk, Meters, all of that is is all within my heart. And, and that, that's, you know, that's my, that was my inspiration. Yeah. The, the challenge is not to sing to the choir, essentially. Um, yeah. But they're your, they, trust me, I've been here. <laughs> no, 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 no. Yeah. They're your core audience, right? So what measures can you do that keeps that 30% of the B-boy and you content and the same charge that would fire up a, uh, a you know, a, a, D, a, a turntablist crowd, but, but still trying. Yeah. So keeping that, that, um, staying sensitive to that, but what is the secret of time? What is that fight to get that timeless music out? What is it? That's well, like, well yeah. Yeah. Well, for, for me, I mean, for me, I always tell everybody, you know, passion, Passion steers the wheel. Mm. It's it's about wisdom, loyalty, integrity, no compromise, and it's all about staying authentic. Authentic. Staying yes. staying authentic. That's yeah. number one. That's number one. Staying authentic. Man. Yeah. And with yeah, yeah, you, yeah. You, you, my mind is going like a thousand miles an hour. Here. Like <laughs> authenticity, man. Honestly. Um, but by default, as you know, as being a member of the Rocksteady crew yourself, um, authenticity within a scene, you're, you're deep rooted in it. So you're already, arguably, you're already 40, 50 percent there, right? By default. Right. So what you're saying is essentially you're trying to find that extra to make the hundred, which is that classy, original, timeless, effortless stay in your record fills a hole in someone's record collection there you go there you go and uh and uh being a genre creator being a genre creator which you've already yeah. done once so that's not going to be a <laughs> i mean you know lightning does strike twice i hear you know? <laughs> no but when um, you go back to when you go back to rock steady crew and you talk you talk about authenticity you look at buck four you look at kiriaki you look at Ken uh, Swift, you look at yeah. Crazy Legs, you look yeah. at Devious, Devious Dose. Wiggles, yeah. That, that, that Wiggles, that was authenticity. Without question. <sighs> that, that embodies authenticity, yeah. you know. And these, are, these are the kings and these are, these are guys that, you know, I've looked up to before joining them. I mean, they, these are the pillars of what we're yeah. talking about, of, 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 of hip-hop. Of For hip-hop. sure. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. A friend called a friend of mine calls it cultural currency. And it's when you've been your legacy proceeds and, you know, no money can take away what you own within the culture. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. That cultural currency is more valuable than than money ever will. Oh, yeah. 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 I mean, I mean, money, my money, money is nothing. It's just it's just an object to, to get you by. It's just an object, you know. You, you, that you you know you give to people and make them happy just to get by and i just i just see it as something that just you know just, because you can you can be free without currency mm. spirit spiritually yeah if you tap sure. in if you tap in deep enough yeah yeah true yeah if you tap you're, very in spir- deep you're enough, a very spiritualized person aren't you as well mike there's super duper yeah super duper tapped in yeah i'm i'm i'm, I'm uh I've been tapped into a higher power, yeah. bigger, way bigger than myself for a long time now. Yeah. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just his, I'm just his instrument. That's all uh, I you're, am. You're the, you're the conduit. You're the conduit. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Wow. And my faith, my faith is really strong. My faith. Yeah, for sure. For yeah, sure. Yeah. Um, just going back to the money thing, actually, because in a DJ world, it was particularly for the time in which you were exercising um, wrist to, to ear action, there was the, the price for records and the price for turntables and all the gear was super expensive. I mean, for that time, I would imagine it prohibited a lot of people getting involved because, you know, what I mean, it's just it's not as it's, it's easier to rap. Right. Um, how, when did you buy your first turntables? What, like, how did it all come? How did was that forged? Uh, I sold I, I sold marijuana in high school. 
<laughs> Fucking great. I, I, I sold it. weed. I, I sold weed. Yeah. You know, and I, I was the weed guy. I was the weed guy. And I'm thinking to myself, oh, I'm, I'm getting I'm getting a dollar <laughs> fifty every morning from from you know from my mom for lunch. And it'll take me decades to save that all just to buy one turntable. Uh-huh. So I'm like, you know what? And then I got into the weed business. That is so OG. The, the business of selling weed, and I bought my first turntable. By hook or by crook, huh? Just get it done. Oh, got it done. I got it done because, you know, I, that, that's just a hustler in me, you know? Mm-hmm. Who was Survival. the DJs at that time? Who were the DJs at that time where you were just like, yeah, I want to be just like him or her? Who were they? Oh, oh, it was, uh, it was Grand Mixer DST. Nice, yeah. Okay. Grand Mixer DST, yeah. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. I saw him... Uh, uh, on the American Music Awards. That's right. Now, now this I remember, you know, through my old history from back in the day. That was that was kind of like the go to for 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 him, for DST, right? That was yeah, man. That was the performance. He did, really. he did Rocket, yeah, and um, yeah. that was it. Crazy. That's when I knew what. That's when I knew what I wanted to be. You know, I knew yeah. I wanted to be a musician, but I couldn't fucking play the drums. I couldn't play the fucking guitar. I couldn't play the bass. Whatever. Mm. I'm like, you know what? But if I get a turntable, I could play all these instruments. For sure, and also <laughs> I think that I think the turntables is a lead instrument. Like it's got syncopation of drums. It's got it's got the lead of a of, of a trumpet or a sax. You know, it, the scratching especially. You know, yeah, and and it's all about you know building up your own arsenal. Whether whether you're getting uh, violinists mm. in a studio to record them, yeah, getting trump getting brass sections in the studio to record them. So that was my process was getting all these people in the studio and recording them and building up my own library instead of uh, relying on finding records to sample. Cause I've done that for so many years uh-huh. until, until there was a lawsuit dropped on me by uh, David, Ax- David Axelrod. Oh shit. J- uh, jazz composer. Yeah. Yeah. S- saw that I used two seconds of of his baseline in one of my songs on anti theft device, two seconds. Which was a banging, which was a banging release, by the way. I loved that <laughs> project. So sick. Yeah. So 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 that that right there. I mean, I threw distortion over it and everything. You know, you know. For me, I'm not going to take a loop and go, oh, okay, I'm just going to loop it without effort or disguising it. You know, that's yeah, my. Yeah, yeah. You know, I'm I'm a ninja in this in 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 this art and. Um, and that was a red flag for me, you know, oh, like, oh, shit, I got to start creating my own arsenal, recording yeah, sure. other people playing instruments. Does and, it taint um, your, does it taint your um, creative, uh, oh, what's the word, mojo? Does it taint your mojo in something? Like, it, that sounds it, like a pretty you know, hardcore thing. Do you know what? You know what? It can. It can. It really can. But, but uh, you just got to know what you want at that yeah. moment, you know. Yeah. O- always in in search of you know like Leonard Nimoy in search of yeah but uh, yeah 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 you just you just gotta just make your mind up and what you want and doing things uh, like out of uh, necessity as far as like I'm gonna use this later for this I'm gonna record well, this I'm gonna, in a I'm gonna stash it away what happens in a lawsuit like when you oh get no something- I don't know. You know, it's funny when I, when I, when, 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 uh, when I tell you that I'm connected to a higher power, it's like that situation there. Yeah. I had, a, I had a good friend that knew his lawyer. Wow. And, and my good friend, Mario C of the beasties called yeah. his lawyer, called his lawyers off of me. So, wow. That, and and that's when I know okay I'm I'm protected and I'm guided you know guided. And my intent and my intentions are pure yeah 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 oh my god I think that's the most important thing in artistry in in a career in artistry yeah my intentions are pure yeah recognize that and you do you go on a different frequency don't you you know like all the bullshit's oh, yeah, down yeah. there <laughs> oh no 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 of course of course. Yeah, you kind of bypass hit the bypass button on the bullshit. Mm, yeah, 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 Bi- yeah. Bypass button on the bullshit. That's a there good go. shirt. That, that, yeah, that's a good shirt. That's that's a name. That's an album title. <laughs> that's a battle that's a good tool, name. isn't it? That's a good name for a band. Bypass <laughs> button on the bullshit. <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> um, but there is something about 
that hip hop era where sampling it just it, you know obviously it's not done like that for all these reasons we talk about but um that crunch lo-fi drop down you know you know it's necessary you need it it's necessary where'd you get it if you can't get it out of sample where'd you go no 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 it's it's you got to drag it through the mud right drag it through the mud and clean it up right so, what, what like kind of saturate it, it crush let it. it rust let it rust let it rust let it build up some grime and then boom and then people then that's where the authenticity comes in right yeah. people know it's truly authentic because because you know yeah. the difference between using um i mean my my uh, uh um talking about like what am i saying like my pet peeve is stock sounds stock sounds suck bowls i fucking hate stock sounds stock sounds so so you got to keep it from from that realm right hmm. from that stock realm because a lot of hip hop yeah. these days are I feel like everybody is using the same sound packs. Yeah. It's all yeah. the same sound packs. I could tell by the snare drums. Snares yeah. and kind of the basses, I guess. But you know, I mean, don't get me wrong, I love there's a lot of shit I do love, but but you could tell, you could tell. And there's not mm. much of there's not much of effort. There's not enough, there's not a lot of effort in making hip hop into to the in today's hip hop. I mean no. Not, not even with enough, the people uh, that you think should know better. A lot of them, yeah, <laughs> they just do it anyway, just to fall in line, and that that troubles me. Yeah, I, I wish, I wish, I wish Nas had that frame of mind of because if Nas picked better beats, you talk yeah, about. No. I mean, from there to there, yeah, yeah, yeah Nas yeah. is one of the greatest to ever fucking do it. Yeah, yeah, but without but, question. But but his beat selection for his songs i'm like wait really you just yeah. you like that beat i'm thinking to myself you like you really like that yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i've got someone else I, I, this may sound a little spicy and controversial but <clears throat> i think farrah munch and red man are the same they're the beat choices i'm like yeah but you're you guys are just well maybe that's the idea maybe the idea is that they are such purest high echelon lyricists that there is no beat that could possibly yeah do not, ta not taking anything away from them they're they're brilliant but no, I'm, just not thinking, too. I'm just thinking like yeah you know, a, a guy like pharaoh munch nas i mean these guys exactly. need need some complete fucking savagery for sure if they're ripping heads lyrically the beat needs to be savage yeah it does, and, and that's, it does. And, that, and that's what I think about, you know, Eminem. Eminem is the greatest lyricist yeah. of all time for me, like as far as metaphor, metaphorically and just without question, bad, without question, like he's, a, he's on another level, but his, some of his beat choices yeah. are just a little too thin. And it's like, oh man, I don't know how we got into this, but. But I'm just saying, it's a, it's, a, it's a big question mark in my head. Like, Yeah, for real. Me too. How is it that these lyrics, you know, I'm not taking anything away from 50 Cent, but he always pulls out some amazing beats. I love 50, man. His beats, his rhymes, everything falls in complete Ooh. pocket every time. Do you know what I mean? His beats are wow. banging all the time. Man, that, that's, ama that's amazing you brought up 50 because people overlook 50. They overlook 100%, 50. bro, they all the time. Over when this thing came out with him, with T.I. trying to call him out and come outside yeah. 50. I'm like, T.I., are you fucking high? <laughs> 50's mixtapes alone will destroy your catalog. Destroy. Catalogue. I tell 50's you. 50's mixtapes. Uh, uh, I know. How to rob all of that shit. Like, come on, man. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. And you know another one? Who's only just now getting his just deserves is Buster Rhymes. Oh, the Buster Rhyme album is crazy. Crazy. Fucking nuts. Nuts. Inspired the shower me. Inspired. It's just. <sighs> but, but you know what? That's how I thought Nas should come out. Yep. You know? Yep. Because when Nas came out, people loved, people loved the, uh, the disease record, right? Mm, people were mm -hmm. talking about it mm. like he was like, oh, the, the king is back. But then yeah. I listened to it. I'm like, the lyrics are there. Lyr yeah. Lyrics are there. But I'm like, music though, the music. 
Busta came know. with both. Busta yeah. came with both. He killed it. He killed it. He, he, killed, just... he killed it, right? <laughs> yeah. He, and he it's a journey. The whole thing was a journey, bro. Oh, like, fuck. But even the, the song with him and Kendrick, oh my god! Oh my with god! The, with, with the Jackson Five sample, what's that one? Um, no, look jokes. over your shoulder. Look over oh, your no shoulder. Jo- yeah, telling oh, you, telling bro. you, telling you, um, bro, bro. Yeah. The only, the only dud though, the only dud I heard recently, which actually will trail in nicely to your experiences yeah. in this domain, yeah. was um, yeah, yeah, was the Black Sabbath. He did a Black Sabbath feature, and I wasn't too sure about that. Was, Who did? You know, you don't. Uh, Buster. It was like Buster with. With well, he put with Ozzy Osbourne, but it was you know, cra- I think it was Crazy Train, or it was it was uh, it might have been one, one of the Black Sabbath songs. But I was just like, oh, I don't know about that, mate. <laughs> I'm not sure about that. Oh, sacrilege, isn't it? No, no, you leave that as is. Yeah, that's the rule, isn't it? You leave that into the in the great pantheon. Yes. Of of creations, you leave that there. Don't take it off that shelf. Don't take it off. It doesn't it's need like, to be dusted off. It doesn't need to be dusted off. At the forbidden fruit, don't touch that song. Don't touch it. No, cre- you exactly. <laughs> but 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 as a, as a creative being, you want to create your own catalog, right? At the end of the day, and that's sure. what uh, that's what I'm still in the process of doing that. And um, I've I've made a new album. Um, it's called Opus X, and it's by far my uh, magnum opus of albums. I'm putting new it. Um, I'm, yes. Nice. And, uh, it's called Opus X, and it's coming out in 2021. It's finished. It's done. Wow. And um, um, this this definitely this is definitely my Rembrandt, my Picasso, my Banksy, Love my it. Ventura, my Phase Two, my Salvador Dali. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? This, what this, tricks? This, what tricks are in store? What's in the? What's on the album? It's it's um, it's uh, it's it's what I talk about. It's uh. Of course, they're scratching, but the main thing is about the music mm-hmm. and the melody and the feeling and the emotion and the drums. Mm. I focused a lot on the drums and the eight hundred eight and the eight hundred eight glides and nice. and and, and, and um, not going to hear any trap beats on this shit. Yeah, that's that's that's. You're not going to hear any trap beats in this no. shit. You're gonna you're gonna hear something that's fully authentic and it's fully like. Um, an, uh, a more mature triple M, like good. I've made my I've made it's my amazing. masterpiece. I've made my masterpiece, and and I'm, and I'm very grateful for it. It's 14 song, Opus X, and uh, wow. yeah, 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 yeah. It's a uh, it's 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 a great thing. It's a beautiful thing. I love it. I love it when creatives get as excited as the fans would. I think that puts them in a very strong position whereby. You can see the fan in the artist. Oh yeah, I mean? yeah, yeah! I'm very, very excited. I'm very excited, yeah. and um, I, I know, I know that that project alone. I don't look at my equipment and go, "Oh, I need to turn it on. I need to come with some shit." Yeah, because I'm holding on to something right now. That's yeah, like, yeah. oh shit! I don't need to put any more pressure on myself. That's because- like the Woo record that never came out. It's in the box. You know, you're holding mm-hmm. this like this this bomb tool. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm gonna be I'm gonna be so glad to share it with everybody. I'm I'm, I'm sure it's gonna bring joy to a lot of people and emotion. Can't so wait, yeah, that, I look I look forward to that. And I got a I got a single, I got a single called Megaton Ten, and and that's me. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's me featuring A Track, Premier, Jazzy Jeff, Babu, Craze, Qbert, Shortcut, D Styles, Melody, all on one track, all on one. Track. Oh my. And, th- and that's god. the sing- that's the single that's the single to my album. Oh my god! The video yes. alone is just going to be just what the hell is going on? Yeah, it is. <sighs> the, the, the song the song is what the hell is going on? <sighs> so I'm just waiting for it's all timing right now, right? Yeah. I know, I know, I know. Yeah. We're in a weird state, and plus, I just came out with this record. Show me, show me. Oh shit! Be Odyssey 2020. Um, nice. You, you need to check that out. It's me and my man uh, Steve Jordan, drummer wow. Steve Jordan. Um, is this is this on Spotify? Can we, can people check yeah, it out? Yeah, you need. Hey, you Easy. need to check this record yeah. out. You need to check. It, it's 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 a mm. must that you get you you check this record out. 
it's nice. it's all it's, it's all done improvisational. Oh, Steve Jordan. Sick. Steve Jordan is one of, is is the mo- one of the most legendary drummers of our time. He, I mean, he he drummed for the Rolling Stones. He, oh yeah, dude, John Mayer, know, of course. Yeah, yeah you yeah. know, you know, yeah, 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 yeah of course. What we Legend. what we put what we put together on this record is so gratifying because it's it was all done on the spot. Oh my god! And, and I bet three it was days just like, we, yeah. Listen to this record when we get off. Make it a point to get this record on Spotify, right? Listen and I include you lot out there as well. Yes, yes. Yeah, do it. Wow. Listen to this record, Beat Odyssey 2020. It's a fourth, it's a 15 song opus mm. uh, into the insp- into the improvisational realm of the serial wax killer. Crazy. Um, you you did live performances alongside Travis Barker, that's another, you know, world renowned drummer. Um, yeah, yeah. Ozzy Osbourne, I mean, we, you know, it's all Ozzy there. When you know, yeah. I mean, the, the list goes on. What's it like in the company of those characters? Bearing in mind, maybe Travis to a degree with DJ AM and whatnot, but they don't all necessarily, you know, share the same um, historical reference points in what you're doing DJing. You know, that like although they were they had hip hop going on. They were in different yeah. genres. How do they well, take more, to when they see you? They're more fans of hip hop. They're more fans of hip hop. Okay, gotcha. What's it like when performing with them and they see what you do? They, you know what I mean? They must lose their shit, no? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, you know, it's uh <laughs> well, they have obviously followed me for a long time, so they know they know where I come from, they know what they know what I represent. And so I guess that's expected of me, you know integrity and, isn't it it's integrity yeah, you, you've it got is it. It, it is and uh it is, it, is, it, is all, it is all you know it's all hooking up for a reason yeah. yeah 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 for sure for sure what's your theory when you go into an arena with someone like i don't know for instance um i mean ozzy ozzy mainly because you know he 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 does ozzy like how how much of it do you draw back? How much of it do you complement what's going on and how much do you let loose? Well, how much, how much do I use the compressor gauge? No. How much do you go? Full like, on? Yeah. Yeah. Like nuclear mix master mic. Oh, you know, when I do my solo tours. Yeah. I, so it's not, not so much collaboratively with other people. You kind of, you, you, you become a, part of the ensemble yeah exactly i i you know it's, it's like you know again like i said like galvanize the troops type thing it's this yeah. working one form voltron and yeah pack something together yeah for sure and, for sure. and, and doing and, and for my solo tours it's just full-on like i'll pull out everything i know within that two-hour set mm. But it's just all the, all about remembering all the stuff I've created over the years and and, and executing, right? Yeah, yeah, I can so, imagine. So, so my style is based on impro- improvisation. I mean, I won my first world title improvising. I won the which music, blows my mind, man. I won that. I won the music seminar DJ battle for yeah. world freestyling. I freestyled it. I winged it. <laughs> it's friday night mike it's friday night over i can't deal with this it's not on a friday <laughs> do, do you know what though do you find like that freestyle aspect because i'm sure rappers go through it as well i know i certainly do a beatboxing do you find sometimes you go down the most convenient of freestyle wormholes and then you suddenly think oh, i've kind of done that last time let me kind of wiggle my way out of this do, do you go into those wormholes every so often Sometimes I do. Sometimes I'll, I'll, I'll back out of something. And I'll do it for a short period of time instead of a long period of time. Mm. You know, so, so make a shorter, uh, a, sh- a shorter performance out of that one piece than what I did the last time. So it's all about morphing something into something that was already been morphed, but remorphing. That's the live performance, right? And I think also. You have a, and because it's freestyle all the time, it, there's this real energy, like some tension and release going on. There's just constant. It's like you're, it's like you're stuck inside a sleeping bag, 
and you're trying to get out of it. That's what it, that's what it, th- the intensity of like you going for it. It's like, yeah, it's, the, <laughs> it's just a crazy kind of action of getting to the end, but in a different way than you got to the end before. You know, it's more, it's more suspenseful that way. Mm-hmm. And the level yeah. of difficulty is uh, more challenging yeah. when it comes out that way, especially when people are videotaping and you get different performances on, on YouTube. You go, yeah. damn, what's this? Yeah. And I'll look at it and go, what is this? I don't remember doing this because yeah. I'm black. Because I black out, you know, I black out and I just think my hands start flying and, and things start happening and, and I don't remember. And then, it's it's gone it's gone and and, and and it's part of that memory you know it takes like, a lot of confidence to do that it takes a lot of confidence to and a lot of muscle memory to freestyle without any yeah just stabilizes yeah. off your right yeah yeah well it's uh you know a lot of people say if you if you reach that 10,000 and it's that 10,000 hour rule yeah we do one thing for 10,000 hours you would mm. you you would have attained master level for sure. I'm, I'm like on an overwhelm millionth hour. Yeah, yeah. Of doing this. Yeah. So you can imagine how it's just like you know it's just it's just ingrained in me. It's embedded all this shit, all these melodies, and all these. It's intuition. My intuition. intuition yeah. My intuition is at a really high level. Like my sense of. Uh, like vibes and yeah. vibration. Yeah, you I'm, must I'm, work a real I'm, low kind of calm frequency. I'm 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 able to to navigate through that through those through those different frequencies, and and there's a vibration vibrational gauge within me that it's like okay, I know when to turn up and turn down. Yeah, for sure. You know, there's, for a, there's, sure. A time, there's a time and a place for something. You know, you mm. just want to hit over the head when they're not ready. You kind, sure. of, kind of like, kind of just like, okay, pat them over the back and go, okay, you could, this is going to be okay. Mm. It's going to be okay. At the end, it's going to get intense. You know, you just guide them through, guide them through the experience without beheading them like off the bat. You don't want to do that. Like, no, no, for sure. <laughs> like we get into some Beastie Boys here because as a classic set up you couldn't be more on the money if you tried and there's these moments in those live arena style acts where in a real kind of drum solo bass guitar solo the dj has his moment you you know in a situation where like the beasties they throw out nothing but banger after banger after banger and you're the dj you must be like ready to burst when it comes to your solo bit. You're just like, yo, get me the fucking torch. I'm going in. Oh, for sure. For sure. I mean, you talk about, uh, I mean, all love to my brothers, Adam, Adam and Mike, rest in peace, Adam. Um, yeah. yeah. They, were, they were able to, you know, for them to provide me that platform was an amazing thing, you know? Yeah. And I, I had to seize all those moments. Yeah. And, did you pinch I, yourself? You must have pinched yourself way too many times. I, I did in the beginning, but then at the but 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 you know, I, I, it was organic. It was an organic connection mm. where where I knew to myself, oh, I belong here. Like I belong. With sure. these guys. I belong with these guys. These are my brothers. Yeah. These are my these are my brothers for real. I mean, I'm convinced of this before I even joined the band. Yeah. But and and but being on stage was like oh shit we were like the ultimate team you know dangerous ultimate team and we were uh we were built on winning championships yeah that was our mindset every night was a game yeah and we wanted to win by 30 or 40 points like that was our mindset go in just go in and i would tell them the record's gonna skip keep rhyming because sometimes I'm going to make the record skip on purpose, just oh, to give, just just to give it that hip hop essence, and that's the way I fuck with people. I, I used to fuck with people on that tour. I used to make the record skip on purpose because I just I didn't want this perfect set. Yeah, you know, I try to avoid these because I would have these perfect sets, right? I'm like, fuck, I got there's got to be some punk rock to this shit. 
Yeah. You know what I mean? So I'm trying the, to fuck everything up. So the awesome, awesome I shot that video, the video that we performed uh, 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 live at Madison Square Garden. Yeah. If you see my solo performance, my solo, and I bent the record and the needle flies off of the turntable and the record and it just, and I put it back on. That's what I'm talking about. Oh, those, are the, those are the moments I, I look forward to. Yeah. Because people go, God damn, this, this is fucking real. You're a beast. It's like you there's, are the control. You are the master. There, there's no fucking two cue points or computers or, you know, we're in Madison Square Garden with the needle and a cartridge and a real record. Yeah. So yeah. There's some real gangster shit going down. You know what I mean? Anything, so- anything could happen. Oh my God, that's the, the mantra. And the, and, the, and the suspense of that gives yeah. people gives people their money's worth. For sure. Oh no. my God, you're right. It's yeah. dangerous. It's dangerous it's music. Danger. It's dangerous up there. So if you look back, look back at that awesome, I, I shot that video and you look at when it comes to my solo performance, I bend the record and the shit skips and it's like, it's, it's, it, 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 there's two seconds of danger and oh shit is he gonna recover will he recover in front of a packed capacity crowd at uh, madison square garden in front of twenty thousand people and that's the suspense of it all and that was the essence that was the essence of us being as live performers yeah no Um, no no machine no playback machines everything on record and microphones, everything. And that was the beauty of it. And that's what I miss that. I really do. For sure. It heralded a new era for beasties and taking, just taking cues from what you just said there. It's understandably, you know, it's, it's, it's easy to understand why. Mm-hmm. Um, and from, you know, as a fanatic, as somebody with the, me personally was turntable first, the beatbox always set the, 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 the nature of my beatboxing anyway was, was very much all about what a DJ would do. I just, me and my friends were just like, yeah, of course Mike's a beastie boy. Why wasn't he a beastie boy? <laughs> it just made, it just makes sense. It's like it, it, you were built for that shit. You know what I mean? Nothing against the DJ Hurricane. Much love That's to DJ. Tr- Much love to Hurricane. I, lo- I, I, I love Wendell. And, um, it was just, uh, it's all timing. And it was all meant to, it was all timing. It was yeah. timing. And they wanted I mean, to make, they wanted to make a move. They wanted to make another move to the championship. So they got a, they got, they were looking for a franchise player. And there we go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's just like, Eddie Van Halen on fucking turntable. <laughs> <laughs> hey, dangerous motherfucker, you are, but I gotta tell you, boy. Like, <laughs> I'm gonna be in this band and I'm gonna intentionally inject about, you know, I'm gonna turn your rock star up to 13. Watch me give a fuck. <laughs> yeah, right. I mean, yeah, it's, uh, I love it's it. uh, the, the nitrous oxide system. Yeah, the, the the flux capacitor. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> oh man, I mean, we could go on forever about all these acclaims, all these critical and you know seminal moments in your career. Tell me, tell me, what is your favorite moment? What's your favorite moment of, of you know that you could go home and tell your mum and dad and be like, and they would get it, and you'd be like, yeah, I did that. My favorite moment was being able to, was being invited to the White House for dinner and being able to have a three minute conversation with uh, Barack Obama. Wow. Three minutes to myself, me and him. Wow. Talking about sports, talking about his Chicago Bears, Chicago Bulls, who's playing this weekend, who do you think is contending? We were just we just went on the limb and just start talking about sports. And he called me, and I'll never forget this. He called me, wow, he was like, wow, I saw you yesterday at the Kennedy Center Honors. And he was like, man, you're a snazzy, snazzy, slick musician. Oh, my God, that's sick. He said I was a snazzy, slick musician. I'm thinking to myself, uh, Mr. President, I don't think people use that word snazzy, but, <laughs> but, but I'll take it. Yeah, yeah. But I'll take it. Yeah. But I'll take it. But, but that was, 
my defining moment. I'm in I'm in the motherfucking White House. Yeah. All bets kid, are off. A kid, I drop out. Tenth tenth grade dropout, selling weed for a living, is at the, at the fucking White House. Shit was real. Shit got real for me. It was real, and 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 um, that's what that's what that's what I knew that I was guided by something bigger than myself. Mm. You know, mm. higher power puts me in these positions, and like here. Take this. See what you can do with this. Yeah. These moments and and they're they're unforgettable moments. You know, like it's it's crazy. What can I say? Like some of the shit that I've done, I feel like if I'm ta- if I talk about it, I feel like I'm lying. Like an imposter syndrome, that kind of thing. <laughs> no, I'm just saying. Like I don't usually like to toot my own horn or talk about what I've done. But when I look back on it, I go, God damn, I really did that. I really did that. And you know it gets it gets me emotional inside because I'm just like because I know where I come from. Yeah, you know, that's just it's like that that one percent out of yeah. out of hundred, the chances. But 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 you know what? That's when um, that's when you you know you got to have perseverance. Mm. I don't take no for an answer. That's what it is. It's the most important yeah. thing ever. I just don't. I just don't. T- I'm not good with taking no for an answer. I'm just gonna keep digging. You've got to be industrious, haven't you? No, no, no. You really do. You really do. You gotta. You really just got to bulldoze. You got to be a bulldozer in this world because it's just a, it's a, it's a, um, it's a ruthless world. Yeah. That we live in. Full stop. Outside of music, <laughs> you got to fucking man up, man. Yeah. Grow. Yeah. You got to grow a pair and, and man up. And um, I was able to do that through my career. Stand up to anybody that was trying to hold me back. Any regrets? I have no regrets. Good man. I have no regrets. I, I feel like I've done everything um, to the best of my ability. And for me, uh, without a manual, without mm. a tutorial, I was able to get through this and figure it all out. Yeah but I haven't figured everything out yet because I'm still a student. So that's what it's about. I think the best bit about being an individual artist is um, if the fans or the supporters have been with you from the beginning, you can afford to make mistakes because they like to me for one, being a fan of yours. I I like to see the journey. Like you want to feel like you're, you know, you're in shotgun. You're, you, you're there for the ride. You're there for the development of an artist. I was the same with Lemmy from Motorhead. You know what I mean? It's like, I, I love, I love the peaks and troughs, the ebbs and flows. You know, that's what it's about, isn't it? Lemmy, yeah, yeah, Lemmy. Then we go back to authenticity, right? Lemmy's a Lemmy's a one of one. Yeah, (laughs) you know, one of one, one of one. (laughs) And uh, yeah, um, I'm trying to be. I'm trying to do my best one of one impression of myself. You've always been it, brother. You have always, <laughs> always been it. And uh, it's been a pleasure having you on the show. Uh, lastly, I before appreciate- we go, lastly, before we go, um, or at least until I switch off, lastly, what's your second greatest moment? Because, you know, if we're hitting some nerves right here on a, you know, short podcast, what's your second greatest moment outside the White House? Wow. Second second greatest moment was, was raising $5,000 for my for my kids charity during the pandemic and that happened in March of this year I, I have a I have a I have three uh, charities that I work with uh, one is Vogel alcove and it's a children's homeless center wow in, okay in Dallas Texas and I was able to do a performance for them thanks uh, to Jagermeister and raise five thousand dollars for them and provide food and and clothing and all that stuff during the pandemic, during my lockdown, I was able to achieve that and 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 and, and help them. And that was wow. a defining moment for me. And I was blessed. Well, yes. I am so glad I asked that question because that has yeah. just rounded you off as like the 360 superhero. And you, uh, you know, that's awesome. Man, yes. Incredible. Yeah. 
Yeah. Thank you so much. But I mean, you know, I could be here for that. I mean, you know, you've got editing to do. You've got pieces to cut up and stuff, you know. There you go. Conquest Damn. album. Conquest album. Mm. You want to talk about records? This is the record. Everyone pick up Conquest on Rough Trade Records. Rough Trade Records. Yo. Special red vinyl. Rough Trade, Rough Trade is still doing it, man. They don't fuck still about doing it. Hey, hey, and if you ever need to see through the bullshit, you can. I got, I got some sunglass, some sunglasses that are out by uh, uh, Black Flies, and these are the MMM Fly Signature Edition. Yeah, on some if, they if live you shit. Want to see, if you want some X-ray vision shit, do that. You they lived on some they live shit. Yeah, no, 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 exactly. I want to give a shout out to my uh, my CBD company, Cannabis. Cannabis uh, concierge. Hold that cannabis concierge inside yeah. the house. Boom, boom. Uh, uh, CBD. CBD and uh, Game Up Nutrition. Best CBD products in the world. Game Up Talk to Nutri- me about the CBD um, products. What, what mill what mil are they? What's that? What mill? What milligram are they? What's, um, what dose? Oh, um, it's, 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 it's middle. Whatever yeah. the middle. Yeah. I'm just going to get into some of that stuff now myself, you know. Never yeah, I'm gonna give a, I'm going to give a shout out to Drew Estates Cigars and um Oh, and, come on. Yes, I'm a cigar man. Big up that yeah. today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh Drew Estates. What are you smoking? What you got? Blessed me with this cool cool humidifier right here. Let me see. Um, let me see you. Let me see your jewels. We got in there. Let's, 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 let's see some God, gems yeah. inside the box. You know what? I can't. I, I locked out. Let me see. I think I locked myself out of the humidifier. Oh wait, wait, wait! wait. I got the key to the humidifier. That can be a good idea. My my missus will definitely testify that can sometimes be a good thing. Yeah, okay. you know I gotta lock it because uh, let me just. I'll show you what I'm working with. Come on, you get let's let's you know. This is, uh, there we go. this is this is balls on the table to draw open stuff right now. The cigar game is is it's all about this. Oh, here we go. There we go. The Colada Dolce. It's a Bach. It's a Bach Colada Dolce. Boy, look at that! Look at the suspense on that. That's fire. Yeah, yeah, this is the one of the best cigars, I swear to God. It's a coffee, it's a coffee infused cigar. Beautiful, beautiful. Yeah, it's amazing, it's amazing. And um I'm I'm I mean, you know, I might puff on this after we get off the phone. Yeah, I know. This is the other thing about cigars, is the moment you start talking about them, is the moment you start salivating for a cigar. Um I, I know I got into like the Arturo Fuentes and and just yeah, I'm really I become a collector, you know what I mean? I guess I, yeah, I reached that I reached that age where it's like from going record collecting and now I'm cigar collecting. You know who I blame for that? I blame Michael Jordan for that because every time he finished a game, oh he yeah, had a yeah, cigar. Yeah. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. He, he's 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 into the fine Cubans. He smokes he smokes six a day. Six. He smokes six cigars a day, Michael J. Yes. Wow. Yes. Michael J is 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 really into it. Like, like, dude, that's seven hours of your day on cigars. Yeah. He smokes. He smokes the Partagas, uh, Luis Etiana, Cuban. The Partagas. He loves the Partagas. What? Those are like a gazillion, gazillion dollars each. And he's just like knocking them out, like <laughs> knocking them out. Oh, I want to give a shout out to uh, Smoking Shells. Hold tight, smoked shells. Smoking what? shells. They they do. I'm gonna open this up right now. What they, they do. They do custom. Uh, they did me a custom needle head. You know? Oh, dope! And uh, if you could see that, yeah, that's lush. Look at that. Yeah, sick. Yeah, yeah. They, they, they did the logo and the whole thing. Yeah, nice chromed out. So I'm gonna give a shout out. Bam. I like to give I like to give a shout out to all my sponsors. You know what I mean? For sure. I like, I, I like to grow together. You know what I mean? We all work mm-hmm. together, and I like to grow together. So um, yeah, and and I stand by my cigars. I stand by my CBD, my product. Got to stand by your product. 
damn straight, man. Hey, it's your yes. podcast. This is what it's all about. Mix Master Mike inside the house. I, I, I appreciate you, Killer. Really. Honestly, it's been an absolute ride of joy, man. And uh, yeah, I'm just glad we got to have a chat. You know, next time we'll have to do it face to face over a cigar, won't we? No, no exactly. And, and don't don't forget, check this out. Beat Odyssey 2020 is out now. All about it. We should be listening to that. All platforms. Get all platforms. You're a, a gem, a gentleman, and you know a true star in the hip hop culture. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Mixmaster Mike inside the house. We are out like in was out of fashion. Say peace, Mike. Peace. All right. <laughs> we out.